this reminds me of uh, one of the fun things we get to do for Gardenia uh, over the next year. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, here at the Garden of Freedom, my soon-to-be constitutional propertarian monarchy, which is that, uh, and what that means, this is a righteous voluntary form of government, right? It's a, it's a, where it's, it's basically just me asserting that my, my ownership of this land constitutes the sovereign right to govern it and to be an independent government. And so we are, uh, well, at one point we declared our sovereignty here like two years ago, but it was kind of like, screw you, we're sovereign, just casual one up in a video. And I, it wasn't really doing it right, you know, either de and for declaring independence. And so what we're going to be doing is announcing, um, oh, I really got to get ready for this, on Independence Day this year, our intent to properly declare our independence with full diplomatic relations to our government neighbors in the United States on Independence Day the year following. And so this whole year between this Independence Day and next Independence Day, we get to go talk to you know the Sheriff's Department and say, you know, hey, we'd like we're, we're going to be declaring our sovereignty, and uh, you know, we'd like to negotiate peaceful relations. And so, like in a way, we're that we're showing a this could be the first phase of of the next American Revolution. And I don't I don't mean to oversell it, but to me, it already is. Uh, you know, as as localization and decentralization and ending the central un-American American federal government. And one of the things you know, we we get to talk to like the fire department, like when we had the fire out here last year, just to make sure that they know. Hey, you are entering a foreign country. We, we, uh, you know, the, the, these. This is our. This is our constitution. We can show them, and it'll be a lot simpler than the U.S. Constitution. But it'll say, Adam can amend this at any time and make it official by either notifying all citizens of Gardenia or changing it on the website. <laughs> like, and then our constitution has changed. That's it. Like that's that's how you do it in the modern age, right? And to, to negotiate terms with, you know, we'd probably reach out to the United States State Department. I think, you know, probably not hear back from them at all or get some silly boilerplate response. But we will we'll at least be able to say over the course of the year, we did all of our due diligence to make sure that we can have a peaceful separation, a thoughtful one. And now when you, th you think about the American Revolution, uh, I, I don't want to blame the founders and be like, oh, you could have done it like this. It could have been so much more peaceful. We could have had a revolution without a war, you know, because uh, back then it really was King George forcing his will on the colonies. And when they said, you know, we're going to be independent, he said, all right, well, we're, we're going to come shoot you. <laughs> there, there, but there was a, there, you know, there was an attempt, I, you know, to declare and to be peaceful and to petition. And there was a process there. And in that day and age, well, shit, with those people here and these people here, it came to war. It doesn't have to be that way in the modern era, in the age of the internet. We can have peaceful separations. And to what extent our sovereignty will be respected a year from now, who knows? But to as far as it goes in the United States, this is already about as good as it gets and way better than living in an incorporated city or a homeowners association or some other area where you pay a lot in property taxes, which for me here are negligible. And I, I need to fill out a form. I think I'm able to opt out as a, as a disabled veteran officially through the VA. So by declaring our sovereignty, it's just like, you know, we're, we're peacefully asking for, you know, these terms and as much as we can get. And the sovereignty that we have here, we are, or the freedom that we have here, we are going to claim it as sovereignty. And whatever you will give us, you know, we, we're not going to fight for it. Like, well, I mean, to what extent would we fight to defend the sovereignty of Gardenia? Uh, would, would we ever resort to physical force? You know, I, I don't think so. If, if the United States, we, we, we submit to the overwhelming force and violence represented by the United States government, should they attempt to challenge our sovereignty with force and violence? Yeah, we're, we're committed to, to nonviolence in this, or at least to the non-aggression principle, certainly. And I think generally 
tactically committed to recognizing overwhelming force and not going on suicide mission, not escalating. So, I mean, would we use force to defend it? Like, yeah, we'll put up a gate. I mean, is, is if you know, force as, as a barrier? Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Um, would you know, would keep the gate closed and and keep cops out? Yeah, if if uh, but if, if if a cop, you know, if a cop scaled the wall to do something here, like I, I don't know what, or to come and arrest it. Like if they send a SWAT team really like to arrest me or anything, like, we're not going to do another Waco or Ruby Ridge or anything like that. Like, no, we we're, we're not, we're, we're, you know, we, we respect people being armed here. Uh, but there is, there is not like a plan to defend against the U S military. Right. You know, we're, we're going to be petitioning for foreign aid under, you know, and, and I think that's going to be a fun way to either, get the federal government to give us a, a giant chunk of money or to expose the hypocrisy in the foreign aid system be like well you gave money to that country because you know that you said it was because they had a poverty level of well look at our average citizen here because we're gonna live i mean I don't know, maybe we'll have a high income average here depending on how things develop certainly a richer and better life although by u.s dollar measured income if everybody's making money through crypto and gold and silver and barter you know, we can say, look, on paper, our incomes are very low. <laughs> All right. Um, so there's, there's a lot we can do with that. And that's the uh, Gardenia Independence Project and the United Nations of Freedom Micronation Project, if you will. Really, the United Nations of Freedom is not a micronation project. It's actually the United Nations of Freedom is, you know, it's like the United Nations, except that it cares about freedom. And the uh, scope, you know, it, uh, it depends on who wants to join. If we end up with, you know, we start with, I think the Micronations Project is a project of the United Nations of Freedom to encourage people to claim sovereignty and uh, assert their Micronation status. And this is why I'm, I'm really excited about Chaz as a, a weakening of the paradigm of well, the government's always been this way, so this is how it's always got to be. Well, no, you want to declare your independence? Do that. And you know, the only liberty – it's funny. This is what I've been getting into with people a lot on Twitter uh, over the weekend yeah, because I've been supporting Chaz. And what is Chaz? It's a bunch of leftists and, and mostly, yes, ANCOMs and ANSOX and, and, and other kinds of liberals uh, creating an autonomous zone because they wanted a way to protest. You know, it's, it's more like – uh, you know, occupy, occupy Wall Street than, than, than a real micronation or sovereignty project because it's done, you know, born out of protest rather than, you know, a thoughtful, hey, we're going to have our own sovereign unit over here and we represent the sovereign community and we're going to do it thoughtfully and peacefully and we're going to have, you know, clear, you know, whatever the authority is and it's, it has to be based on property and consent, right? Uh, there's going to be clear authority and, 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 you know, agreements about people living together and what the terms are uh, of this community. You know, obviously it didn't have that. It, it is haphazard. There are major problems with it. If there's a violation, obviously there, <clears throat> there's a lot of crime involved with it. Um, and by that, I mean like, you know, real crime. Uh, but how much of that is infiltrators? You know, would you look at the colonies and be like, well, you know, the American Revolution really shouldn't have happened because, you know, rates of rape were, were much higher back then. And murder, you know, murder rates were real. There was a lot of crime in the colony. And there was slavery, you know, there was slavery, you know, because the colony, and really, actually, that's, that would be a legitimate, like, it, and it's funny to hear people say, well, when the South seceded, it was about slavery. But when the colonies seceded, it was about freedom from the British Empire. It's like, well, for the Southern colonies, it was kind of about slavery, too. Although that was, generally respected under the British rule. That wasn't an immediate factor, but to establish freedom and maintain slave state status, that was that was part of the uh you know part of it for them. So today, but the idea of declaring your sovereignty for whatever reason and doing it as, as peacefully as possible, I think this is a, a, a beautiful step forward that Chaz represents an, an amazing example of. And I've, I've heard a lot of libertarians go, Adam, you're, and, and we dealt with this in the show last week, right? Adam, you're defending communists. Yeah. I'm not defending communism. I, I'm defending communists. I'm supporting, like, 
if if a communist came to save your life in a car wreck, like you would support the communist saving your life, right? Not being a communist. You wouldn't support communism. I'm not supporting any of what they're doing within Chaz that is coercive. If it's voluntary socialism, voluntary cooperation, mutualism, whatever it is they're creating, if it's by voluntary association without coercion, and most of what they're accomplishing is, then, then that I support. The The bigger ideology of, of you know coercion, of socialism, of communism, of course I don't support that. But this is really important for all of us. As Franklin said, right, if, if we don't, was it Franklin? If we don't hang together, we surely we will all hang separately. Or was that Adams? Doesn't matter. It's a great, it's a great concept, right? Is that if, if we if we don't unite against the powers that be, they will be able to keep us divided. We will hang separately. We will and and the reality today isn't hanging, hang, you're not gonna die. I mean, you might die earlier because of you know all the chronic effects related to statism in the American government today. But you know, are, are you gonna die? Like, no, that's not that, but we, we have to stand for justice for, for the right thing consistently. Like me defending Roger Stone. I am not a Trump supporter. I'm a friend of Roger Stone. I see him getting legally railroaded. I'm going to call it out. And I think he's a libertarian at heart anyway in a real powerful way. So that's, there's another reason to support Roger Stone. But I'm not supporting his worldview. I'm not supporting Trump. There's, like The people using all these... That dishonest arguments to attack Chaz and to attack me for supporting this idea because what they're doing is a beautiful assertion of, hey, we're not going to be part of your system anymore. We're opting out. Screw you. And they achieved it by historical standards extremely peacefully. And in terms of establishing what they did, like what they actually accomplished, by getting the police to abandon the third precinct, or not the third, it was, it was it the third precinct? No, that was Minneapolis that burned down. Uh, East Precinct, or something like that, in uh, the Capitol Hill region. All right, there we have it. Yes, I was right the first time. Benjamin Franklin, we must indeed all hang together, or must assuredly, most assuredly, is it must or most? Most. We shall all hang separately. Very important idea. Very important part of of American history and understanding what made the revolution possible. People hanging together who otherwise would have hung separately. So are we going to let Chaz hang? Now, a bunch of libertarians talking on the internet are not going to be the deciding factor necessarily on whether or not the Chaz becomes something sustainable. I hope it does. Like I'm, I'm really rooting for it. And I, if, if you're in Seattle, if you're in that area and you can get out there and be on the ground and be a positive influence and support them in, in you know, not in anything they're doing that is involuntary, that is coercive, but in what they are doing that is, uh, you know, maintaining the sovereignty of that area. Now, some people have said, you know, oh, my gosh, Adam, but there are private property owners in there. Well, it's government streets. It's a lot of it's government parks. If people want to opt out with their private property, you're like, yeah, let's help them make sure that they have the right to, you know, defect back to the United States, you know, and, and see if, if we can make this in and of itself a, a truly righteous uh, enterprise. And for the libertarians who are attacking this, and I think a lot a lot of people who claim to love freedom who are attacking Chaz uh, are doing so because they're insecure. I know this is a, a hard pill for a lot of libertarians to swallow, uh, a lot of conservatives, you know, but yeah, these are lefties doing this. Like, can you support someone doing something righteous and important? Even if you disagree with their worldview, that's kind of important for the hanging together part to work here. And it's like a lot of these people who, who are threatened by this, like their insecurity is paying. Like it's, it's trigger, triggering for a lot of, you know, freedom loving libertarians and conservatives who, who really should be going, 
ah, crap, they beat us to it. Let's support them and, and hope they establish a, a path that, that we can follow in their wake on and, and establish freedom for ourselves too. Or, or let's support them and make sure that this right to declare your independence, <coughs> this essential American right, is practical and useful in America today, not just some words on paper from the past. Let's bring this to life and make it meaningful. And instead, they're they're saying, well, because the people who are doing it don't agree with me on absolutely everything, and they're they're all these dirty hippie leftists. Uh, well, I that, that what they're doing must be illegitimate. I'm not going to support them. And it's like, what you're really trying to say is, I wish I had the guts to do that. And those of us who do are celebrating this. And there are a lot of people on the fence. Do I attack this or not? Do I just look at it and laugh at it? And it really doesn't matter. As long as you take away this important lesson from it, you do have the guts to do this. You can. You're a human being, goddammit. Your life has value. As Mr. Beale said on Network in the movie, you have the right to declare your sovereignty, to declare your independence as an individual, as a community, as a political subgroup of a larger group. It is wrong to force you without your consent into a system that you do not want to be a part of. As MLK said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I hope that the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone can become a just and righteous project. Top to bottom. And something in a truly sustainable way. If you care about freedom, you will celebrate and support anyone declaring their independence as they have with the chats.